Prime Minister directly gives guidance on overcoming consequences of typhoon luxury. ASEAN Council of Teachers ACD Plus One Convention opened. New destination for ecotourism and community based tourism. Hello, you are tuning in DRT News. Arriving in Guangbing Province on September the 15th evening, Prime Minister Nguyễn Xuân Phúc, accompanied by the provincial leaders, carried out an on-site visit to the storm-affected areas and directly gave guidance on the work of overcoming the consequences caused by the storm number 10. Witnessing the serious damage of Đồng Hới City, which was suffering from widespread power outages, the Prime Minister asked for the instant solution for rectifying the power supply system for local residents. He also requested the provincial government to deploy functional forces to help locals repair their houses. Prime Minister Nguyễn Xuân Phúc suggested the Quảng Province authorities along with the support of the armed forces, police force, organizations and unions make every effort to get people's lives back to normal. The first thing must be done is ensuring the most essential need for people's lives, protecting them from falling into difficult circumstances of hunger, thirst and homelessness. Prime Minister stressed that production activities and infrastructure system must be immediately resumed in order to minimize the impact on the people's lives. The Prime Minister agreed to provide emergency support of 3,000 tons of rice for people leaving the storm-affected areas. On the evening September the 15th in Da Nang, the opening ceremony of the 33rd ASEAN Council of Teachers ACT Plus One Convention was held with the participation of Minister of Education and Training Phum Sun Nha and Da Nang's Leaders Representative Vice Chairman Chen Van Bin. The conference receives more than 400 delegates representing officers and teachers of educational organizations and associations of ASEAN countries and Korea. With the theme, The Role of Education in Global Cultural Adaption and National Cultural Reservation, this is a forum for teachers to share experience in education development as well as discuss to find out education solutions, taking advantage of opportunities and overcoming challenges in the context of globalization, aiming at the objective teaching and learning for sustainable future. The conference takes place from September the 15th to 17th. In addition to discussion sessions, the delegates also have a chance to try cultural exchange activities such as art performances and national culture booths. The 24th Apex Small and Medium Enterprises Ministerial Meeting and the related meetings under the theme Improving Competitiveness and Innovation of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises in Area of Globalization kicked off in Ho Chi Minh City on September the 15th. At the meeting, the minister discussed three subtopics of facilitating enterprises to get access to markets, more deeply joining the global value chains, creating convenient business environment for micro, small and medium enterprises to get access to advanced technology, management capacity, improving capacity through training, consultancy and business linkage, promoting business spirit in the digital area, promoting startups and enhancing business ethics. The 24th Apex Small Medium Enterprises Ministerial Meeting discussed and adopted the key documents such as the Apex Declaration on Promoting Staffs, strategy to make small and medium enterprises green, sustainable and innovative, a report of the ministerial meeting which will be submitted to the APEC 2017 Economic Leaders Meeting. Regarding the work of guest reception and logistics, currently the City Department of Foreign Affairs is continuing to build suitable plans ensuring the high quality of services during the APEC Economic Leaders Week and other major events taking place in Da Nang within the framework of the APEC year 2017. 
The Da Nang Department of Foreign Affairs is also urgently training the qualified liaison officers and volunteers who are able to effectively serve the related events in Da Nang. Recently, at a meeting to review the preparatory work for the APEC Economic Leaders Week taking place in Da Nang in the forthcoming November, Chairman of the City People's Committee, Huynh Duc Thơ, has requested the City Department of Foreign Affairs to pay much attention to the work of guest reception and logistics, as well as external activities during this special event, avoiding any mistakes which can be badly affect the city's image. Regarding the healthcare service in preparation for APEC Da Nang 2017, leaders of local medical sectors revealed that the service plans have been made ready for APEC, including the human resource allocation for emergency duty, hygiene control, food safety in four premium hospitals, in particular Da Nang, Hoan Mỹ, Family and Vinmec hospitals. Currently, all of these four hospitals have planned the number of beds for medical emerging issues. Da Nang Hospital, moreover, proposed a private area with separate lane to transport and serve patients when necessary. The Da Nang authorities have already asked the Vietnamese Prime Minister for permission to address the local master urban plan in which mentioning the issues of planning and developing underground space. Municipal People's Committee Vice Chairman Nguyễn Ngọc Tuấn remarked that Đà Nẵng is a young city. The city authorities, therefore, will continue learning more from other foreign cities worldwide in developing Đà Nẵng into an underground city in the years ahead. Đà Nẵng City will also focus on applying the compact city model in the future. As a result, Đà Nẵng needs to have metro lines linking the functional subdivisions, a system of underground constructions under the central square, underground parking lot. This urban planning also sets the target and orientation for investors at home and abroad. Once the city's underground urban space is operated safely, the local residents will have more space for daily life. This will also bring the real estate sector a brand new product line, which is the underground premises for business in the city. Japan, with more than 3,400 foreign direct investment projects in Vietnam, with a total registered capital of nearly 44 billion USD, is currently the Vietnam's second largest foreign investor. Particularly in Da Nang, there are only about 134 Japanese businesses with a total capacity of nearly 500 million USD, which is a quite modest figure. During the recent working trip to Japan for investment promotion, Vice Chairman of the City People's Committee, Ho Ki Ming, said that the investment capital source from Japan continues to be a priority of the city, especially in such fields as high technology, IT, supporting industry, and high-quality services. The city also suggested the Japan government give more support to carry out strategic infrastructure projects in the fields of seaport and logistics. Da Nang also established the Japan Desk at the city's investment promotion agency to support Japanese investors, at the same time publicly listing the investment projects on the website. Strengthening the work of solving enterprises proposals as well as receiving proposals of city-based Japanese businesses and directing the relevant agencies to solve the issues. In recent years, in addition to sea and river tourism, Da Nang has been in lack of ecotourism and community tourism products. Recently, the city's tourism sector and relevant sectors made an on-site trip to learn about the tourism potentials of the Gui House, art performance troops, the Tum Tum Ya Ya dance and cuisine of Kutu ethnic people living in Talang and Dan Bi Hamlets in Hoa Bắc Kham Miu, Hoa Vang district. Through the survey, people working in tourism sector assess that this place will be a destination with diverse tourism products as it gathers sufficient sectors for ecotourism and community tourism, including landscape, terrain history and culture. Located close to the city center with quite interesting tourism products, visitors could experience the indigenous culture, ecotourism and community tourism at this place. However, in order to attract and welcome visitors, the city needs to embellish the landscape, build specific tourism products, as well as train local people to do business professionally. 
is the end of the news today. Thank you very much for watching and please log on to drt.danang.vn for more news and updates. Thank you and goodbye for now.